I'm José Apesteguilla, I'm a professor at the Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona IESI. My name is Miguel Ángel Ballester, I'm a professor at the Universitat Autónoma de Barcelona and Barcelona IESI. Uh, together we have written this uh, research project on the measurement of uh, rationality and individual welfare. The standard model of decision making in economics uh, considers individuals as having preferences over the set of alternatives. Alternatives can be whatever, can be pension plans, can be financial products, can be consumption bundles in the supermarket. Let us consider this last example and uh, consider there are only two goods. Good one, good two, and we are contemplating bundles by the amounts of the two goods. Okay? Now, the preferences of the individual, the way that we model preferences of the individual in this setting is by way of indifference curves. An indifference curve is going to be consumption, all the consumption bundles that the individual equally evaluates. Then indifference curves that are farther away from the origin represent, represent consumption bundles that are more preferred. Okay? Now, given the prices of the economy and the income of the, of the individual, this is going to define the consumption bundles that are affordable for the decision maker. So this is represented in the, in the triangle, in the green triangle. Now the problem of the decision maker is to select one of these consumption bundles. For doing so, he's going to focus on the affordable consumption bundles and he's going to look to the most preferred alternative. This is alternative X star in the, in the figure. In the last decades, however, research has documented mounting evidence suggesting that individuals sometimes deviate from the standard model. By now, it is well known that uh, the act of choice is affected by the presentation of alternatives. For instance, the distribution of products in the shelves of the supermarket guide and shape our consumption decisions. At the same time, there are uh, many so-known uh, menu effects. Um, a product which is very expensive could be more salient and hence more choosable if we add to the menu an even more expensive product. Uh, in any case, all these effects uh, end up with the agent choosing an alternative which, which is not the optimal one, according to her preferences, represented by alternative Y in the graph. This new evidence uh, poses two new challenges. Challenge number one is how to measure the inconsistency of the individual with respect to the individual decision-making model. Ideally, we would like to address questions as whether uh, age, uh, gender, income, education, etc. affect the level of consistency of the decision maker. For such, uh, for such, for such questions, we need uh, an instrument to measure the deviations of the individual. Challenge number two is that if the individual is inconsistent, then it means that there are no preferences that will explain all the choices of the individual. But still, we may wonder whether there are preferences that are going to be the closest representation to the choices of the individual. This is important for uh, predictive purposes or even for uh, public decisions. In response to the first challenge, we propose to measure the welfare loss of the individual. Uh, this can be captured by the following argument. The individual has chosen alternative Y in the graph which is uh, by no means the optimal alternative for this individual. There are a bunch of alternatives uh, represented by the red area that are at the same time affordable by the individual and better off. Uh, each of them could have been chosen but has not been and therefore represent a welfare loss for this individual and inconsistency. Uh, we propose to calculate the area of this uh, red zone and to aggregate all this information across all the different decisions of the individual. In response to the second uh, challenge, uh, we need to find out which are the best uh, preferences explaining the data. In order to do so, uh, we aim at uh, shaping the indifference curves in such a way that the area uh, of inconsistency becomes minimal. We know that people don't always make the best choices. If we want to measure individual behavior, we need to bring human error into the equation.